Hey guys, you're back with Steph and Dennis, and today we're talking about why we can't afford to live in our favorite city or our dream city, aka here in Toronto. Now that probably sounds very vague to start, but we're sure a lot of people can resonate to the feeling of having called somewhere home for a very long time, and then coming to that realization that you can't afford to actually live there and by actually live there, specifically buy a home or buy real estate there. Anyway, you'll have to keep listening and hear us out on this one, but today we're gonna walk you through the pre-qualification process for getting a home, and also exactly how much we would be pre-approved for right now with our current incomes combined if we were to try and buy a real estate property. So if you're interested in this video and more content like it to come in the future, subscribe down below. We're getting really close to 40,000, which we're super excited to see. So thank you all for that so far as well, and let's jump, jump dive right into the video. Okay, so before we get into everything for us personally, we think it's important to actually walk through the process of what it's like to go ahead and try and buy a property in your city. Now we posted a video a couple of months back where we talked about the changes to the real estate market here in Toronto and also what we've been seeing in parallel in other big metropolitan cities. Overall, the prices of rentals had been dropping throughout the year of 2020 and even at the beginning of 2021 so far. And we saw that firsthand by touring some of the apartments for rent up in Toronto, which is where we are. But on the flip side of that, the prices to actually purchase a home have been going up and up Throughout 2020 and even more in 2021, the prices are on fire and they don't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. So since we've been seeing that trend on the side of buying a home, and it's obviously something Dan and I have both talked about on this channel before wanting to do in the future, which is invest in real estate and ideally have an investment property, it made us curious about what it would look like for us right now if we were to go ahead with the pre-qualification or pre-approval process to see what we could afford. So first of all, I do wanna mention that there is a difference between, you've heard me throw these two terms around now, but there is a difference between pre-qualification and the pre-approval process. So getting pre-qualified is typically a very simple and easy process that can go by really quickly. You can either do it online or over the phone and we'll show you us doing it online in just a second. Basically, you're providing a potential mortgage lender a snippet of your personal financial information. So stuff like your income, your debt, your assets. And then based on that information you provide, the lender will give you a high level overview, just a summary of what they might be willing to lend you if you were to go forward and try to buy a property. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine from hearing how high level and simple and quick it is, a pre <laughs> a pre qualification is not actually a true guarantee of a loan that you would receive. Again, it's super preliminary just to give you an idea, but a pre approval is what you'd actually need to have any sort of locked in guarantee on a loan amount. So a true pre approval process looks pretty similar, but takes a little bit longer, and there's actual verification of the information you're providing. They're not just taking your word for it. So the lender will actually do a full on credit check on you. They'll doc they'll verify all that documentation that you provided and ensure sure that they actually, you know, believe everything that you're saying. Then they'll actually provide you that real number that they are willing to pre-approve you for. Again, it is still a pre-process. It's not the final check mark of approval. So there's typically a time limit attached, say 60 to 90 days on average. So the outcome of this is that you'll ideally know what the maximum amount of a mortgage that you'd be approved for is going to be. You'll also be able to estimate your potential monthly mortgage costs and also lock in an interest rate for the time period that you're being approved for. So that's the key with the time period piece that keeps that interest rate that they're giving you and giving that approval for an actual set amount of time that that's locked in at. So again, we'll show you a little bit about what the pre-qualification process looks like in just a second, but for the actual pre-approval, like I mentioned, there is some real documentation that you'll need to provide and get verified. So the first is proof of your income. So if you do have a salary job, that could just be something as simple as your pay stubs, but you also need to include any additional income that you earn as well. The next is proof of assets. So this could be your bank account statements, so your saving and checking account, but also investing account statements as well. The third piece is your credit score so they would do a credit check in order to verify this and see what your score is at in this case and at least according to borrow well we did see that ideally the lowest interest rates you can get because again that's going to be based off of how good your credit score is is ideally a credit score of 741 or higher so next up is employment verification which of course is a little easier if you are employed at a company it could be your contract a letter from your employer something like that to verify that you work where you say you work and last up the fifth one is also just additional documentation it could be your sin number uh, driver's license, ID, different pieces like that that are personal to your whole financial picture. So now that you know what you need to get pre-approved, where do you actually go? I know I mentioned mortgage lenders before, but what does that mean? So first of all, you can go to mortgage lenders, which includes banks, it includes credit unions, it includes mortgage or insurance companies as well, specifically that you can look up that are outside of the bank or credit union space. And there are also mortgage brokers that kind of act as the bridge between you and a mortgage lender. And again, mortgage brokers typically do not cost you a fee. Instead, they receive commission from 
from the mortgage lender once they actually finish the process. Also, one last thing to keep in mind on this point is that your pre-approval amount is typically the highest amount that you're going to be approved for. So really keep in mind that this is your max, max budget. You might end up getting approved for less than this. You might need more money for closing costs. You'll definitely need more money for closing costs. There's also ongoing unexpected fees, maintenance costs, moving costs, all the fees and costs that pile up. So make sure that you're not aiming for that highest, highest amount. Give yourself some wiggle room in there. Okay guys, now we are back here together and we're gonna actually take you through our pre-qualification process in real time as we do it. And we're gonna find out together how much we could afford or get pre-qualified for right now if we're gonna buy a property. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into two different calculators that I'm gonna show you. One is the one that we're actually gonna use and that's the one for one of the big banks. But I did wanna show you guys the CMHC one just for the sake of it in case you wanna use that one instead. So we'll have those linked down in the description box below for you guys to check out after. Anyways, let's jump in. So this is the first calculator that we have. This is the one from CMHC. The one that we're gonna use is this one here and we're gonna kick it off by putting in our city and province apparently. So there we go. Obviously Toronto. Huh. Let's go next. House or condo, Steph, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Realistically, since we're looking for an investment property for our first purchase, which Dan will talk about later, we're gonna click house. I think that's more realistic. Probably, uh, probably less realistic, yeah. probably more expensive. <laughs> uh, that's true. More what we're looking for, I guess. What is it? Realistic wow. is one that our <laughs> annual income is 138,000 combined. Typically in our videos, we do separated uh, figures, but this is all combined. Okay. Next is down payment. We have currently in our savings, like cash available, liquid cash, 35,000. Expenses, this is combined, approximate, by the way. <laughs> 3,000. Uh, for this, we have zero, so I guess we can just click Lucky see us. your results. Good news, you may be able to buy a house priced up to 600,000. Nice, so it looks like our pre-approval or pre-qualification, because again, this is not an actual official pre-approval, but it said 600,000, which is a lot more than the last time we did this, which is kind of exciting. We did do this like two and a half years ago, maybe, not in a video, but at the time we still, then still had student loan debt. We definitely had less income, less yeah. saved. Um, so this is actually nice to see. What was it, like 200, 300,000? I think it was like $250,000. <laughs> We're like, ah, I don't think we can live anywhere with that, yeah. but that's good to see. So it says up to 600,000. I guess this is the recommended actual purchase price. Cause of course, like I mentioned, closing costs are in there. So they're telling you 570,000. Uh, and then the typical mortgage loan payment, I guess this is monthly, yeah, mm -hmm. per month is about 2,660. Uh, and they also show the interest rate on here too, right? So 2.44%. Cool. Yeah. So good to know. We're gonna kick it back over to me, actually, to talk a little bit about what that would look like for us if we were actually trying to realistically buy a home in Toronto right now. So I will see you in just a sec. Now that you know more about the pre-qualification and pre-approval processes and have seen how much we are pre-qualifying for in particular, we also wanted to talk a little bit more about what it's like buying a home in Toronto because if you haven't heard us mention it before in past videos, it's definitely expensive. Even with that being said, there definitely is a busy market here in Toronto with a high demand for people looking to purchase homes in the city. We read an article a few weeks ago that said that there were 9,148 homes bought in the GTA within a two week period in March, 2020 alone. Now to give you some context on that, that's an 174% increase from that time last year. On top of that, the selling prices for all different home types on average in the GTA is 1.1 million right now. And specifically for detached homes in Toronto proper, it's at an all time high of 1.75 million. Again, as an average. Obviously those numbers are a little bit daunting if you're picturing buying a house right now. And again, like Den and I, for example, we do live right in downtown Toronto. So even though our monthly rent is affordable for us right now, and if you haven't seen some of our budgeting videos in the past to break down what those costs are, make sure you check them out. But the cost to actually buy a home on average right where we're living is a little bit less affordable than that. So with that information in mind, let's break down how much it would cost us to actually pay up front. Because again, even with those figures of how much the home costs, it's not actually what you're paying in down payments and closing costs. So let's break down what the actual numbers would be for us to buy a house in the GTA right now. Also just to note that this is gonna be very high level 
uh, and a generalization as well. So keep that in mind as I break through some of these numbers or break down some of these numbers. So according to Canadian law, homes over a million dollars or $1 million and over require a down payment of 20%. So if we were able to find a house worth a million dollars, which is under average in the GTA, we would expect to pay at least $200,000 or 20% as part of the down payment on the home. And on top of that, there's also closing costs, which could include inspection fees, legal fees, title insurance, and also land transfer tax. So again, keeping that high level, depending of course on the type of home you're buying and exactly where it's located, that could be, and you should budget for at least an additional $40,000 for all of those closing fees. So then on top of those two fees, you also have to consider the debt service ratio and make sure that you can afford your monthly payments on a home that's gonna cost that much. So according to an article that we did find on ratehub.com, you'd on average have to have an annual income of $175,000 or a little more than $175,000 in order to afford the monthly costs on top of the down payment and closing costs on an a million dollar home. So again, that's very high level, but what we've come up with here is a total of $240,000 plus an annual average income of $175,000 in order to con in order to afford a home that's about a million dollars. Now we also wanna point out that with just an income of $175,000, and yes, I'm saying just because it is in the context of buying such an expensive home, but also keep in mind that's the minimum amount that you need to be able to afford it. You do have to consider, does it make sense for you to actually take on so much debt in order to buy this house? Now this is definitely a concept that we could talk about more in a future video. So as always, let us know in the comments if you're interested in that. But sometimes people, when they're thinking about their dream home or dream city, like we mentioned before, or that concept we always hear of the forever home. Sometimes people take on more than they can actually truly afford, even if they can just squeak it in because of that rationalization. So to sum all of that up and with all of this considered, obviously that means that we can't afford to buy a home in Toronto at this time. And I'm sure there are some of you out there watching that aren't a big fan of the big cities and you're thinking, ah, who cares about Toronto anyways? Why don't you just move out into farmland where you could buy multiple farm properties and homes that are a lot larger than the price of what you can buy in Toronto anyway. So with with that thought in mind, we're gonna kick it back to Den to wrap it up with what our future plans are with that in mind. Okay, so with all that being said, and given the fact that we clearly can't afford to buy a house in Toronto right now, what are we gonna do? Well, between the two of us, by the end of the year, we should have approximately $50,000 in the bank. And then if we look at, let's say, you know, June next year, we should have at least $65,000. So I think we kind of mentioned this before, but for homes that are less than a million dollars, you are able to put down less than 20%. So in this case, if we look at, you know, high level numbers, if, if we're putting down approximately 10% down, that means we'd be able to afford $500 to $650,000 worth of house. And I do want you guys to keep in mind that when I say, what are we going to do? I'm obviously speaking from an anecdotal perspective, meaning that, you know, when if you've watched any of our previous videos talking about our financial goals, we are in no way tied to having to buy a house in Toronto. Like we just, we just wouldn't put that on ourselves. I mean, the average home price outside of Toronto in the GTA is definitely less. I won't say it's for the low, low price, especially in the market that we're in today. But typically, the further you go out, the cheaper that the average home price gets. For example, the average home price in, let's say, London, Ontario is somewhere around $600,000 right now. So although it's still expensive and rising, it's still much more affordable than what you can get here in Toronto. So we haven't made any concrete plans on what we're going to be doing next. But what I do really want to distinguish, especially while we're having this conversation, there are distinct reasons for us loving Toronto, the GTA, or in general, just larger metropolitan cities. You know, it's interesting because we've gotten quite a number of comments on our previous real estate videos of people talking about moving further out, you know, getting more bang for your buck. And don't get me wrong, like our, our both of our families live outside of the city. So it's not like we don't get it. We definitely understand that aspect of it. What I will tell you is that our goal is to buy an investment and not a personal place of residence. And obviously that could change depending on the market, depending on, you know, a change in our personal goals. But let's say we were to buy a place in London, Ontario, strictly for example, purposes our goal would be to use that as an investment property so renting it out getting it to a place where it was as cash flow positive as possible and you know hopefully replicating that process building equity and so on and so forth once again we're not pretending to know it all we are learning just as you guys are so hopefully as we share our journey and as we learn more then you guys can also learn more as well
All right, guys, so that's a wrap on this video. We hope that you guys enjoyed it. Once again, if you guys have any of your own real estate stories, if you're buying your first property right now, whatever, whatever, let us know down in the comments below and share some of your experiences. As usual, if you haven't seen some of our previous videos, make sure you do check them out next door, next door, and we will be back. You know the vibes. Let's go.